Hi, I'm Tam. And I'm Eternally Mortal. And this is the Hidden Egg Podcast, where we talk about vulnerability. Yay! Was there more to say there after that? I can't remember and what our intro stuff. was. Oh, and stuff and things! Thank you. Come on. So <laughs> and articles on medium.com. <laughs> <laughs> What are we doing again? Who are we? What's going on? You're listening to season five, episode six, and today's theme is an interview with You Good. Welcome, You Good. You can say some stuff now and introduce yourself. Hello. And you can actually call me Christine, it's fine, but I hope you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yep. So, uh, friend, of the pro- friend of the program um, and a writer we both adore. So you actually have the notes this time, Mortal. So if you wanted to do any of the talking, feel free. I don't want to take the stage from you. Understood. I'll do my best. Okay. But don't wait for me. Go ahead okay. and do your thing. <laughs> okay. So, so Christine, um, you are you good on Medium. And... I, I would say that, like, I I feel like you're well-known, but, like, that might just be my bias. Because you, you've got 442 followers on this account, and I didn't count how many articles, but it's it's not quite as many as Sturge. I mean, that was our last interview. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I would say, like, I, I hope this isn't offensive, but I would say that you a- kind of represent the average medium writer, I don't consider you average in skill by any means, but you you kind of come and go and, and you're not completely like day-to-day writing every single chance you get. You're not on the grind, as they would say. Right, right. Yeah. So How would you I, feel? And I also am not offended by any means because I feel like kind of embarrassed that you picked me to be on your interview <laughs> because there's so many amazing writers on medium so thank you for even thinking about having me on appreciate well, that i mean i i get that you would say that but you your writing is even though you don't write a lot and you don't focus on trying to write like like fantastic stuff like you don't do feedback very much you just kind of put it out there it's still like yeah like sturge is just saying there your writing is still really phenomenal so I think you're just, you know, you're downplaying yourself because you just don't know, you don't know how to see yourself from the outside. <laughs> I'm but, really glad that we're not sharing video because my face is bright red right now. <laughs> based on that, though, what kind of medium writer would you consider yourself to be? Because, like, you know, there's like hobbyists, there's people that just do like journaling or venting or memoirs or comedy or whatever. Where would you put your, yeah. your writing? For me, I feel like I don't really have a specific type of writing because it all depends on my mood and and what needs to get accomplished with that piece that I'm writing. So sometimes it's just because something silly happened in my life and I want to share it. Or sometimes it's because I had a sad moment or, you know, something that I'm trying to work through that I just need to get the words out of me. So I like the memoir style writing and that's kind of where I'm going with my writing. But I would say sometimes it's more just hobby, sometimes it's event, sometimes it has that journal aspect to it. So I don't fit in a box, actually. I'm all over the place. (laughs) Speaking of all over the place, Mortal, you messed me (laughs) up because we didn't do the shout outs at all. Oh my God, we didn't do the shout outs. (laughs) just rewind (laughs) i'm so sorry we get on the we get on the thing with with christine and for some reason everything we're just like what are we doing (laughs) who are we right we're just we're just we're just buddies hanging out what do you mean we have things to do no Um, i i didn't send these to you so it's completely on me it it's totally my fault but i i did have some shout outs if, if it's okay. You, sent, you totally sent them to me. I have them up right in front of me. No, I didn't and... send you the shout outs, did I? Yeah, I've got four of them from, oh. you know, several of our uh, awesome audience. Okay, well, I take that back. It's not completely on me. It's a little bit no, on YouTube. No, we just completely forgot it. We've... So we got a, we got a, we got a one question uh, intro to the <laughs> interview. That's yeah, kind of like, no, like a solid teaser. Solid. Like a teaser. Now we're going to just segue straight into uh, shout outs. Let's do it. Yeah. So, uh, I stuck with I stuck with the uh, the core, the core of the pod. So I got no, you can't move to Canada when Trump is elected by Robin Wilding, which is hilarious. 
super recommend to check it out. She... Uh, I really am going to say out loud the subtitle, which is, I'm sorry that you elected Cheeto Mussolini, but we're full. Oh, my and God. That alone it's, is hilarious. It's full of those. Like, she has so many different things that she calls Trump. It's that alone is worth reading through. That's fantastic. <laughs> But yeah, I, I really loved that, and I was like, I have to shout that out. And then, since I found Robbins, I was like, I might as well do all of our core, you know, viewer people, and went to Sturge's most recent. Well, not most recent, because he published another one, I think, maybe. No, this is this is his most recent. Um, which of my writing skills are brilliant? Which uh, that was a prompt that we are doing in our writing group, which is, by the way, it's a forum base now. We're not, we're, we're doing, we're doing some experimentation there, but Heck yeah. uh, I don't know if you were able to read this before we did the show since I just sent them all to you, but this one, like I said, it goes into the things that Sturge does well so that, you know, we kind of know what he has to offer, what he wants to offer. And what he enjoys doing. That's such an amazing... I completely, like, fell off the, the writing group train last week or so. And so I didn't even pay, look at the prompt, really. But I think this is awesome. Because, like, Sturge is going through what he thinks about his own writing. And that... And looking at the positives. Did I understand that correctly? Is that... Is that... It's more looking at his skills in relation to writing. Yeah. But still, doing the self-reflection like that can really show you what your strengths are and how you're advancing. I think that's awesome. I think it's a very good prompt. So then the next one was by Murphy's Law. It's called, I was called crazy for quitting my job. Then this happened, which, like, I don't know what to say, man. Murphy's just really great at, at writing a story. And he's had some really great stories to write. So I don't, I don't know if it's just luck that he has all these wonderful experiences or if he's actually this skilled to be able to put them all together is probably both probably both probably both but yeah this one i didn't even know that he <laughs> i thought he was still teaching <laughs> i didn't know that he had quit his job so this this was kind of like a oh goodness yeah current affairs i'm, a, I'm behind i'm a lot i'm a lot newer to murphy than uh a lot of the other people and so i i've been i haven't really gotten to know him too terribly well yet but i kind of did a quick little skim and i think these two prominent pictures in this article are both of him and like very different vibes there's a third at the bottom like lower down and uh the third one is particularly attractive i really like the third one nice <laughs> Yeah, so, um, but it looks really good. I, I have it up to read later. Um, I only was able to actually really read one of the shout-outs before we got started. I just kind of skimmed the rest of them. But, but I've then, read something else by Murphy, and it was great. So he's great. Right. And then last but definitely not least was Ben Ulancey's Vacuous Versimilitudinousness. Wow. Versimilitudinousness. I'm so bad the at that word. <laughs> the ponticating proofs of bilingual You brawl. are, I think anyone is. <laughs> and this poem is hilarious. It was it, so much fun to read. It may or may not be a, a, a sort of spoof on other kinds of poetry. Let's just say that. I don't know yeah. what else to say, but it just, like, this one's just go read it. Like, there's nothing. Just go read it. Trust me. Yeah, and it's it, it's it's such a it's such a fun dance with words. It's so amazing. I really enjoy it. Um, I would say there's even probably a little bit of absurdism in it that really uh, appealed to me. But I don't know that that was Ben's intention. Um, I have no idea. Because poetry, I always get concerned I don't understand it the way the reader intended or the way the writer intended so uh poetry is always a weird place for me but i really enjoy <laughs> reading it and i think i think i got it caught on i mean salad of words is part of it yeah so you know it is kind of a word salad but a beautiful one on purpose mm -hmm. anyway absolutely so that that's was, our shout out that was my shout outs sorry i i should have put it a lot sooner 
Nah, back to I, you good now. It's all right. <laughs> Thanks for your patience, Christine. We really appreciate that. <laughs> we got a transition. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, right. Uh, notes. Where were those notes again? <laughs> I there don't know. Are. I put them. Where were we? I put Where them in we? there. What are we doing? Who are we are doing? You? Where are we? Who am I? Yeah. Okay. okay, so we had just talked about what kind of writer you good considered herself, and uh, not to speak for you, but you said kind of a little bit of a little bit of everything, but you kind of like the um, memoirist, I believe, uh, path mm -hmm. a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. I don't cool. know if I necessarily like follow a specific writing style enough to be considered in one, you know, one genre really. Yeah. You're just a box dodger. Let's dodge them yeah. boxes. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh huh. <laughs> so sometimes. <laughs> yeah. What? Go ahead. Sorry. Go. <laughs> sometimes you you publish more. Sometimes you publish less. How do you balance your writing with your life? Yeah. So I don't do it well. Obviously, <laughs> if you could see the account. <laughs> It's very difficult because I am constantly writing in my mind. Like things come in my mind all the time that I want to get out and I want to write. And I'll jot little notes down in my phone and, and I just never get back to them. So it kind of sucks because the things that I have to do, my responsibilities then take over what I want to do, which is writing. And um, I am working now two different jobs and I've got two little ones. So unfortunately, my writing gets pushed to the side and then when I do have time it's the middle of the night and I'm falling asleep on my computer so it's been a struggle to try to make time to write but there's certain things that I feel passionate about or if I have enough feelings about I'm I'm gonna just get it out of me because I can't even sleep otherwise that's actually why I wanted you on as an interview is because I think a lot of people in that situation would look at everything and be like, you know what, something's got to give. Goodbye, medium. But you, mm -hmm. you look at it and you're like, I mean, I don't want to stop, but I can't do it right now. So I'm just going to set it to the side and come back to it later. Yeah. And that's hard because when I started, so, I mean, we might get into this a little bit later, but I started medium in 2018 on my old account and then even that one no one knew about it i had no followers and i just used it as my private journal kind of so now moving to this account where i actually was trying to get it off the ground and engage at the beginning and i just couldn't keep up with it and then i felt guilty like oh crap i can't read everybody's stories and i can't interact with all these people that i want to be interacting with and then i realized that it was kind of defeating my whole purpose because i I wanted to write ultimately as much as I want to engage with people it was originally my intention was to just have a place for my words to live so it's been a balancing act but I've never wanted to completely give it up but there were times where I was thinking you know maybe I should just shut it down and just write in my one drive and let it live there like why does it need to live on medium but I found enough uh I don't know I get a lot of reward from writing on medium so I, I like to keep that avenue open i'm glad too because i really enjoy reading your writing you have some of the, the most you. vulnerable stuff and um i can i think i can honestly say that you're a significant portion of how i got to write on medium in the first place Sam was the ultimate like inspiration for me but with the connection that you and i made i was able to look at medium a little bit more favorably and get back to it a little bit, if i remember correctly mm -hmm. So I like that. Mm -hmm. It's good to hear. Yeah, I think I, I introduced you to Medium, but you didn't really get excited about trying to write on Medium until you and Christine kind of met. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, now yep. let's all inspire him to write a lot more, says Sturge. <laughs> Don't worry, I've, I haven't forgotten about the Rocket League piece. It's still cooking. So, like, like Mortal said, you write really personal, vulnerable stories. Um, just some of the ones that I, like, came up with off the top of your profile were, like, microdosing with panic disorder, which is very, very personal. It's not something that I think a lot of people would write about. There's to celebrate a lifetime of being fine, which you 
dig into some really deep concepts that I don't think people even think about half the time, much less discuss in public. And then there was the 100 duck-sized horses or one <laughs> horse-sized duck, which was an experience that you had that you just had to share that I don't know that most people, like most people I think would have lived through that and just gone home and been like, I just need to put that out of my head. I just wonder is like, well, like each, each of these is like a peek into your life and your mind and who you are as a person. But are there, are there things that you're not comfortable sharing? Well, from the idea that my, my name is you good instead of Christine and it's my identity that I have hidden. So I write behind this, this name because I, I don't really want everyone to know who I am. And I guess that part of me is ashamed of it, that I'm not proud enough that I would share my identity, but my name is unique. And I feel like I would put people that I love potentially in an awkward situation if I was able to use my name, but I would not be able to speak unfiltered like this, if that makes sense. So by going behind this pen name, now I can say everything that's in my brain, which is a liberating feeling for me. And there are things that I've wanted to say for so long and kind of felt silenced that I couldn't say it or I shouldn't say it. And I just say it. I just say everything and anything that I want to. And it's, it's kind of an amazing feeling to have that platform to do it. Heck yeah. I think, I think we understand exactly what you mean, considering there's no way that our birth names are the accidental monster or eternally mortal. <laughs> oh, it's not? <laughs> really? <laughs> But yeah, the, the freedom to be able to say the things that are in your heart and mind to say, but that you're worried might affect people around you negatively, just to be able to put that out into the world and, you know, not feel, well, I don't know how to describe it, but like you know, the reservations about sharing that kind of stuff are kind of evaporated with medium. So I get it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's not so much that I'm trying to protect myself because even in my real life, I'll talk to anyone about anything. Like I'm not generally embarrassed of my experiences, but I know my family is not keen on me sharing all the details. And it, I guess that's a them problem, not a me problem, but I'm just super aware of the fact that they feel uncomfortable and I don't want anyone to have pain associated with something that's bringing me pleasure. So I, I feel like by doing it this way, I can still express myself without potentially harming anybody that I care about. Heck yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, we kind of have that same thing too. You just want to respect the people that you care about and not do things that, mm -hmm. that could potentially harm them or bring things that they didn't ask for into their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can get that. Oh, Sturge. Yeah. So where do you get the inspiration <laughs> to your stories? Um, like what what life events make it to the page versus the ones that don't? So most of the things that I write about are things that are just rocking around in my head for a long time and I'm trying to process them myself. And when I'm just thinking about it, I can't get to a resolution. But when I start writing about it and then I reread my own articles before I ever published them probably 20 times. And then I actually can see it in a new perspective. So it's most of the time something that I'm just trying to reason or trying to figure out. But a lot of times it's driven by sadness or anxiety um, or just experiences, just things that I've experienced. And I'm wondering if other people had the same experiences just to feel a little less alone. I guess I, I want to put it out there to see if anyone else had something similar happened to them or they could relate. I like that a lot. Uh, and then of course the, the funny stuff, like every now and then I'll just write something that happened to me that I feel like I'm on a hidden camera show. I'm like, what the hell just <laughs> right? happened? Like someone's got to know about this. I can't <laughs> keep it to myself. So I like to share those ones too when I get them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, like the horse, the horse sized duck article, which is this. Yeah, up. it was the oh it was. Goodness. I mean, in being in that situation is, is certainly like just n nerve wracking. But like after the fact and not being the person that was in that situation, that's hilarious. Like, like 
why would we're you? still talking about it but everyone yeah. in the district like knows this guy still <laughs> it's like yeah. it, it never died <laughs> that's so funny it was anyway, it was sorry. a pretty crazy thing so mm -hmm. you used to have another account um one that no longer exists on medium so nobody can like go track mm -hmm. it down what about that decision do you feel comfortable sharing with us today so that first account like i said i had opened it in 2018 and I didn't really start writing on it until 2022. And that account was when I started reconnecting. Well, when I started writing more frequently on it was when I reconnected with one of my childhood best friends who we could, I'm air quoting Twin Flame, I'm air quoting Soulmate. Um, I, I didn't sure, really sure. know how to yeah. place him, but that was an emotional affair that I had gotten myself involved in. And I had written a lot of, really vulnerable pieces on that account and when that happened there were some people in my real life that had access to the account and i was very paranoid because they were using what i thought well i'm still not sure about um were using it against me to manipulate me and got me in a bad situation so i kind of had one foot in the door one foot out debating whether to keep it open there was a time where i had a lot of the stories just hidden and I, I just didn't have them accessible, but I didn't want to delete it. And then finally, I thought that I was going to be brave and delete it. Like that was going to show the world that I was strong. And now I do kind of regret that I did that because once you hit that delete, it's not just inactivated, it's gone. So I've got my, my little archive PDF that Tam made me, which I'm so glad that I did that. But um, I, I wish I had it. I wish I, I still had it intact. So that's kind of a, a bummer in hindsight. But at the moment, I thought it was like a power move. So it's a good lesson, a good life moment to teach you something mm -hmm. about yourself. So that's hard, though. I get that. And I know yeah. with your you good account, you, you did still talk some about that twin flame thing. Because you, you said that that was a lot of what you started doing on the other account. And uh, so I, I pulled up that, I, th I think it's the first of the Twin Flames ones that I don't know that you've written a whole lot about it on You Good, but The Ghost That Won't Leave, My Twin Flame, was one of the mm -hmm. articles that you kind of like tried to, tried to wrap it up. I think there's one other mm -hmm. after this where you wrapped it up again, but sort of like a shout out to that old account. Yeah, so there was a time where there was some if you were if you were sneaky enough you could have kind of found the the old account. I did have links that were linking back to the old account. I had kept it open because I had been ghosted by my twin flame at that point or what I thought was ghosted, which was would have been the third time that that had happened with him. And I I just knew he was still reading that other account, so I didn't want to close it because I thought that was the only doorway to that relationship. And um, I did leave different articles on there on purpose. And then finally, when I, I closed it, I, I was able to get some, I don't even want to say it's closure because it was closure on his end. And I did write about this. He finally wrote me an email and there's a, a chat GPT summary of one of my articles. What is this article? We just were talking about it. I forgot already, but there's, um, do I have it? Oh, was it? Know. Oh, was it the ask but and there, ye shall receive? Is that the one? Ask and, yes, ask and ye shall receive. So this one was when I finally got the last email from him, and it was like a ridiculously long rambling email, and we put it into ChatGPT, and it gave me a nice little summary of what the <laughs> hell he was trying to say. But um, that was that was the last one. So I don't have a ton of twin flame stories on the you good account because I had told the entire story on the previous account, and. All right. Now, looking back, I almost want to reopen that whole series and rewrite it, knowing what I know now. It, it's funny how a little bit of time shifts everything that you thought you knew. Right. So That would be really I kind of that, interesting, I think. Yeah. It's something I play with because that ended up being, it's like a 126-page book. It's a PDF when I put all the, the stories together. Like, it, it's a book. And mm -hmm. there's so much more to it now in hindsight that I would love to to dig it up and and start to go through it again with the knowledge that I have now but I haven't had the time to do that but it's on it's on the list of to do 
Sturge right. says you should publish that book after you update it. I yes. agree. Yeah. And look, I, I don't want to kind of... pressure you into that if you do, but like I've read some romance novels that are 126 pages and they don't all end happy. So like, you know, might be a decent idea if you wanted to. Yeah. But you know what? In the end, it's what you learn from that experience. And like you've got the ups and the downs, but the growth that happens, that's really, that's the, what the story is about. It, it's not really about the romance or, or anything else. It's about how I changed as a person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So based on that other account, what would you do differently, if anything, if you could do it again? <clears> hmm. <throat> I think I'm like I said, I'm kind of bummed that I did disconnect it, but the people that I had trusted with knowing that 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 was my account in real life, I mean, obviously I have need to make better decisions about who I, I let in my life and who I should probably keep out of my life. So that was a hard lesson to learn. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just like an, I'm a very open person and I'm a very trusting person and that's what got me in trouble. So with this account, I was a little bit more hesitant to let anybody know about it. And little by little, every now and then I'll write something and I share it with somebody in real life. And it, it's a matter of time before the people in my life know that this is my account. But I think, what would I do differently? Is that the question? I got yeah. off track. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't think I would do anything differently because... It, it got me the lessons that I have today. I know that's a cliche type of answer, but I, I think I needed to go through it that way. Heck yeah. I isn't, love that answer. Isn't it so weird that sometimes we can regret doing things, but then look at it and be like, yeah, but I wouldn't change it. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Love that. Because you wouldn't get to where you are if you didn't. Like, that's what they always say. You've got to go through the hard stuff in order to, to come out on the other side. If everything went great, you'd have a boring story. And I mean, we can't change the past anyway. So mm -hmm. yeah. let's look to the future. What are your plans yeah. for you good on medium? Mm -hmm. if what any? are my plans? That's a great <laughs> question because I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I, I had like moments where I was going to just be a writer and I was going to write a book and I'm going to do just like all in on the writing. And then when I realized I just don't have the time and energy for it, it was kind of a downer moment because I, I thought I had to give it up. And now I'm just keeping it as there when I can. And when I can, I'm trying not to give myself any shame over it because I, I can't. If I if I force myself to write, it's shit. Like I, I know what comes out of me when I'm not in the mood or if I don't have the energy. I have to be in the right headspace and I've got to have something that I need to say. So now that I'm kind of getting to know who I am, my writing is just, it's changing along with me. So the plan is to just continue with the stories that I've already started and just finish. I have so many things I have to want. I, have, I want, I can't talk anymore. So many things that I want to write about that I haven't gotten to. So the plan is to at least get those completed at some point. That's such a right on such a common problem with writing. But you yeah. don't even have any drafts. My drafts like gives you anxiety, you told me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? My drafts are on my OneDrive. So I guess in a way I do have I have an unfinished folder, but I will not put them on Medium because when I sign into Medium, if I saw them all there, I'd be like, mm. Oh my God, I need to get these published immediately. Truth be <laughs> like, told, once I it have goes almost into fifty of those. So Oh man. <laughs> I can't. I'm it's like emails. Quick... I never want to have any emails sitting in my inbox either. I'm going to do a quick little bye to Ben. I might have missed him. Is he still here? Yeah, Ben's still here. Ben's taken off. So I wanted to say oh, bye to Ben. Bye, Ben. Oh, bye, Ben. Um, <laughs> do you have any goals like outside of Medium? I know that you were talking about wanting to write a book. Is that still on the table? And do you have like other things that you wanted to do with writing? Or Yeah, you know, I... I always wanted to write since I was young and I've always kind of dabbled in it, but it would be amazing to write a book about my, just a book of my stories and what you did for me when you put together that PDF of all my stories and I have that, it's, 
when you can hold it in your hand, like I did this, I wrote all of this, it, it's kind of an amazing feeling. So I would like to, at some point, get all of those stories and figure out how I can intertwine them together to make cohesive sense. But right now, it's just still putting together the pieces. And then one day, hopefully, I could take all of this writing that I'm doing and then make make the book. Because I've written before, like for my doctorate, I think I had told you guys this, I had to write my dissertation and it's a huge leather bound book and I held it in my hand and I was like, eh, I, I wasn't impressed. I was pissed. I was mad that I had to go back to school. I was mad that I spent all that money and I wasn't proud of that at all, which is like so disappointing. So having a look of my work of something that I actually am passionate about and I wanted to do that's that's the goal sounds like a nice goal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i hope you make that that goal because i'm i'm excited to read the book me too i hope so too <laughs> it's a lot of pressure though when you think like because then yeah once you say you're gonna do something or for myself like if i put that out there then i hold myself like you must do this and no one is holding my arm <laughs> like you must do this but in my mind then i, I get this Kind of unhealthy uh, expectation there yeah yeah i, I think we all that. we all can understand that pretty well yeah mm. i think we 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 share that a little bit the three of us in certain mm -hmm. regards mm -hmm. yeah so I, I wanted to ask you a few more questions about the name that you chose your pseudo name because not everybody uses mm -hmm. their real name whether it looks like it could be a real name or it's not have you found any difference between how others interact with your account versus when they were interacting with your other account? My other account also was a pseudonym, so I can't really speak to it because, I mean, people who knew me in real life and they read it, they were surprised, I think, at some of the things that I wrote just because there were things I, I probably didn't talk about out in regular conversations, but... I don't, I can't really pair it because I've never used my real name, but that's even now I, I wish I could because I'm a teacher and I have a lot of my students and I, I feel like they would get a lot out of my stories too, but I could potentially get fired <laughs> for things that I want to share, or I could potentially ruin relationships for things that I want to share. So I don't think I have that liberty to, to use my real name, unfortunately. I understand that's, that. That's fair. Same boat. Same boat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think in today's world, like, because people get fired for what they put on social media, it just makes sense to have a pseudonym out there so that you can kind of protect yourself in your real yeah. life against your online life. It's, it doesn't feel safe. Like, if I had my name out there, I would be, I wouldn't be writing what I'm writing. And let's right. be fair, it's, be it's not that, like, we're, like, out there spreading hate. Like, no. I know that that's also a, a thing that people try to protect themselves from. They go around and they spread hate, and they're like, I don't want to pay for these consequences. This is this is just us being honest about our feelings and our experiences, mm -hmm. and that that can have dire consequences when linked to your actual, like, in-person, real-life information. Certainly. Right. And that's kind of why I had to shut down that old account was because the person who I thought was a friend was taking that information, my vulnerability and things that I was sharing freely and using it to manipulate me and to, to kind of, um, yeah, to just pretend that he knew things that he didn't really know. He was just looking at my, my articles and picking all these pieces and now I see it but at the time I didn't realize and I thought he was this guru that was seeing from another world that he you know he had these superpowers and then silly me <laughs> he was just taking things from my work and using it against me yep I hate that oh, that's rough mm -hmm. so it did really, you want to that, that burned did you want to talk about like how you came up with you good and what it represents yeah, so story. this account, this, I don't know um, 
the, the actual name you good was I could not think of a name and I, I went through every different thing trying to figure out because I, I felt like it had to be perfect and then I always say you good you good I say it all the time people say it to me I say it to everyone and depending on the tone like it takes on a whole nother meaning so I was mm -hmm. just kind of asking myself like as I was sitting there trying to figure out like yo you good and I wasn't good, but I'm wondering, like, how is everybody? So I said, that's it. That's the name. And I just, I put it down. And I'm so glad that I did it because I love, I really love that name. And it makes me smile every time I see it. So, Heck yeah. It makes me out. smile every but, time I see it, too. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a great name. It's just a funny thing. Yeah. Everyone knows you good. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's famous. Oh, oh also, as far as like the ori origin of the <laughs> the account, so I have the stalker series on you good at the beginning, it's far down, but that kind of tells the whole story about um, why I had to shift. So is it called the? Stalker I have a series? lot of stories now. It's called. I'm pretty sure. Um, it's so far. It's like one of the very first couple stories that I wrote. I think there's six of them. Oh, you know what it's called? The guru, uh, the the something guru and the wolves. There's oh, anatomy of a username. Funny. That one just talks about why I picked you good. Uh, Blast from the past. That's the beginning of it. Blast from um, the past. How the you how the you good account came to be. That's it. Yep. So there's I think a couple of different parts. Yeah, that's to that one. story. Yeah, oh, and they're here. all linked, so I again. tried to, um, at the end of each article, I put a little link so that if people want to follow it. Oh, I forgot to mention also at the beginning of, of your account, kind of, maybe it's more in the middle, was your What Cracked First series, which I think was yeah. also, re it's really personal, but it's it's a more of a medical mental health journey. Mm -hmm. Oh, but and so that, vulnerable. I have been working on the last one. I never finished it. And I never finished this one either because I never got an ending to the story. I don't, I don't have, I've, I've given this to people to read and they're like, so what happened? And I'm like, <laughs> and you're like well, that's the whole know. point. I'm like, I don't have an ending. <laughs> Nothing happened because we, we don't know. Like it just kind of leaves you on a cliffhanger, not on purpose, just because we really don't have all the, the pieces to that puzzle. So, I mean, maybe one day down the line, I will find out the real truth about this story, but that I don't know. And then the What Cracked First series is really important to me because that's my mental health journey. And I've been writing about that for the last 10 years. So that one also, I think I left on a cliffhanger because I didn't know how to end it. I didn't, I had one more article to write to kind of complete the series. And because I wasn't 100% well, I didn't feel like I could write it. I couldn't give that conclusion because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. I could no, be uh, misremembering, but I could have sworn that the the last one that you currently have written in the What Crack First series, it has a sort of ending of kind of like, like accepting that it's it may never have an ending. It's, yeah. it's not quite I the ending. I that, left it like open. Yeah. And, and you did say that like, as, as things develop, you'll still add to it. But like, there was sort of a... a closure in the acceptance that like maybe this is just life now mm -hmm. and that's where matt is trying to come to accept which yep. is tough <laughs> yeah so based on all of that did you have any like words of encouragement or wisdom for other writers that are in similar positions to you I just, I mean, for me, I, I hate to give people words of wisdom because I don't feel like, who am I to say what anyone else should or shouldn't do, but I know that I love reading stories of people's own experiences and their journeys and just them being real. So when they're writing, I think a lot of people try to imagine who their audience is and, and they try to fit into that box again. And... I love the stories that go outside. I love the stories that are just so uniquely them. So I just hope that people can write with that authentic style and, and kind of love themselves through their writing and not try to, I don't know, 
try to meet the expectations of their audience, but just enjoy what they're doing because your writing is always going to come out better when you actually enjoy what you're doing. Agreed. Yeah. Love that. Absolutely. Did you want to promote anything while you're here? It can be your stuff. It can be somebody else's stuff, you know, pr promote whatever. You can thank God, the universe, Buddha, or the flying spaghetti monster, whatever you want to do. All of the above. Um, <laughs> well, we talked about some of my stories and I, I mean, especially the mental health series, that is one that's close to my heart because I want to reach other people that were struggling and, and just give them some hope and see that they can resonate with the story or hope that anyone could resonate with that story. Not that I want them to because it's a terrible experience, but it just feels good to, to not feel so isolated and alone when you're you're dealing with those kinds of situations so that's one that i would you know really like people to read if they were going to read anything um but as far as thanking and all this i mean i love medium and medium brought me the two of you so i, I feel Aww. like i'm Aww. super lucky it's just You're crazy lucky. because like we've never met each other and i think you guys know me more than the people that I see every day in my life. And you listen and you hear me. You don't just listen. But I'm just very grateful to find you. Oh, yeah. So even if nothing else happens and I make $1 forever more on Medium, <laughs> it's it's all right. All right. <laughs> so, Sturge is screaming. Right back at you. Right back at you. Mm -hmm. Completely. Oh. I got to say, one of the biggest, <laughs> the biggest perks of Medium is... Just meeting people and making these kinds of connections. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And doing things like this, like you guys don't realize when you speak about vulnerability, then other people will feel more comfortable after they see you modeling it. And then they want like, oh, hey, they, they're not afraid to do that. They're not afraid to, to talk about something that's a little bit uncomfortable and the more people that normalize it, then we don't all have to cry in corners. We could just cry together. <laughs> Come yeah, on. absolutely. And you, you wonder why we chose you for an interview. Come on. <laughs> you get it. When people hear you, yeah. they're going to be like, oh, I'm just like that. That sounds so great. Blah, blah, blah. You know, just like you do. Yeah. Those are the stories that I connect with. Like the, the readers that I always go back and I actually look them up by name. Like I know like certain people that I go to look for because they're so real. And when they write things and you just feel it, you feel every emotion they're feeling through their words. And it's not because maybe they're fantastic writers, but you just, you can kind of tune into that. It's really cool. I love it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I think the ability to use words to express your feelings like sometimes that's different from being able to weave the words in a in a you know appropriate way or a, an expert way like they're two different mm -hmm. skills they're both writing but like one of them's writing their spirit and the other one's writing you know kind of intellectually which neither right, are right. bad it's more technical i guess but i yeah. i think i think you're right i think a lot of people tend to gravitate more towards the people that write with spirit rather than the ones that just know what words actually fit what they're trying to say. Yeah. Well, we're all just trying to belong somewhere. Like you, we read Brené Brown, Brent, Brené, how do I say your name? Brené Brown. Brown. Why am I saying it's so strange? Either way, <laughs> like she talks about belonging. And when you find this group of people that you never knew existed, like you guys are, halfway across the country and I was able to connect with you and that gives me hope in the world like okay there are people out there and maybe I'm just not seeing them around me because I'm not giving people enough chance to to really speak their mind either because when you're reading someone's work you don't have time to do the back and forth or like think about what they're mm -hmm. thinking of you it's just all spilled out right there on the table so it's a different you get like that inside view quicker to somebody mm-hmm Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I was going to say, I think that the whole world is is leaning more towards vulnerability. I think there's a lot of fighting uh, to try and stay away from that because there's a lot of people out there that don't want to be vulnerable. They don't want to share who they are and what they're about to, of themselves. But mm -hmm. but I really think that 
the, the pandemic in 2020 when all of our performers that we watch all the time all the the you know the big stars that we all care about they all had to go inside or they all had to quarantine for a little bit even the ones that didn't believe in the shit like everyone saw people be a little more real and we were all yeah. fascinated and like i got so into the internet during that time i do hear a doggo <laughs> sorry he's going no, nuts it's... he's ruining everything no it's not ruined at all it's not ruined at all it's so relatable actually um <laughs> there's a ton of people that he's like i hear there. you mortal keep talking oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think the vulnerability is really killing it out there. And I think that it's kind of slow, like we're all get, kind of slowly getting there, but eventually the vulnerability is going to be the juiciest oh. shit out there. Everyone's going to love it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to mute my microphone. I feel bad. <laughs> uh, well, actually let's go ahead and do our outro, I think. Um, and if, if, if Doggo decides to quiet down, you're welcome to pop back in. Um, yeah. Do you have any Let's final words? Bruno, uh, there's some stories about Bruno that you might be finding on my page too, because he pops in every now and then, yeah. gives me some entertainment. So you guys can <laughs> check check out Bruno if you want to see him. Heck yeah! Thank you so much for talking to me for for being my friends. I love Heck you guys. Heck yeah! Hell oh, yeah! That's so sweet. Thank you so much for coming on on you good it's it's a delight to talk to you anytime we get the chance to and to showcase you on our our little our little tiny little sh corner of show on the internet is is a delight and an honor honestly and i'd also like to thank the people that showed up for the live recording sturge gerald sturgill uh there was also ben ulancy and i think peter murphy popped in for a little bit too so thank you mm -hmm. for being part of the live recording and you, dear listener, can be a part of the live action by joining our Discord through themonsteralley.com, which also has links to our articles, Spotify, and Substack. And special bonus, the Substack is the only place to get the oh. fucking uncensored version. I want to <laughs> I want to thank all our listeners for coming along and hanging out with us. Um, whether it's your first time on the Hidden Egg or whether it's, you've been here the whole time, we really appreciate you lending your holes to us very much. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm eternally mortal, and I hope you find smiles this day. And I'm the accidentalmonster.com. You can find us both on medium.com. Did I say .com after my name? You, you did. You did. You can start over if you like. <laughs> <It's> totally fine. <laughs> I am the accidentalmonster.com. This became a website. <laughs> I know, right? I, I am a website now. Uh, you find us on medium.com or through themonsteralley.com, and remember to follow yourself always.